Today we're going to talk about hair analysis in forensics. I know y'all have already been reading a little bit about this and have done some case studies, but we're going to go in a little bit more detail about what we're really going to look at. A little fun fact to start off with is that an average person loses 40 to 125 hairs per day. Do you think you lose more or less? <clears throat> All right, the hair's main function is to regulate temperature, act as a sensory organ, and to protect. Careful analysis of hair can provide important clues in an investigation. Hair can be considered class evidence or individual evidence, depending on how the hair was found. If the hair follicle is attached, DNA analysis can be performed, and therefore it is individual evidence. Without the follicle, the hair is considered class evidence. Now, if you don't remember the difference between class evidence and individual evidence, go back and look at our notes from first semester. Cases cannot be solved solely on the basis of hair analysis unless DNA analysis can be performed. Hair can be collected from a crime scene by plucking, shaking, or scrape, scraping surfaces. That should say scraping, not scrapping. Sorry about that. If hair is collected as class evidence, no hair follicle, forensic scientists can make observations about the macroscopic and microscopic features of the hair. What's the difference? Remember, macro means big, micro means small. Based on these observations, the hair may be narrowed down to class of suspects. For example, the hair belongs to an Asian female. So again, hair can be observed in two ways, macroscopic. So this is when we're looking at the hair, we could say, okay, we know that this person had long hair, it was blonde, and it was curly. Then we can also look at microscopic, the pattern of the medulla, the pigmentation of the cortex, the types of scales of the cuticle. And we're gonna look at all these in detail. The best microscope to view hair is a comparison microscope that can allow a scientist to view two hair samples at a time. The function of hair. We talked about this at the beginning briefly, but let's get back to this. It regulates temperature. So think about animals in the wintertime. They puff up, they get bigger. Um, it protects skin. And it acts as a sensory organ. Structure of hair. All hair has the same basic structure. There's two parts, the follicle and the shaft. So you can see on the right, the follicles at the bottom. This is what we sometimes think about. It goes into the root, it's the root of the hair. Um, and then we have three layers, the cuticle, which is the outer layer, the cortex, which is the middle layer, and the medulla, which is the inner core of the shaft. You can see over here, in the picture to the right, the medulla is in the center, the cuticles on the outside. The cuticle is a transparent outer layer of the hair shaft made of scales that overlap. The function is to protect the inner layer of the shaft. The scales move from the scalp to the end of the shaft. So why would this be important for us to know as forensic scientists? Well. When examining a section of hair, the part of the shaft closest to the scalp is the youngest part of the hair. This end can be used to test for the presence of toxins such as drugs or metals in the body with a specific time period. The cortex, the middle part of the shaft, this makes up the largest part. This is what you will most likely see under our microscopes in class. It contains most of the pigment or the melanin that gives hair its color. The medulla, the center of the hair shaft. Difficult to see with a cheap microscope, so we probably won't see them um, very well. You might be able to see a little bit, but there are four different classifications of the medulla. The absent medulla, continuous medulla, interrupted medulla, and fragmented medulla. So we're going to go over these in a little bit more detail in the next video. Um, and when I return, we are going to do a lab. We're going to look at all these and see what we can see under our microscopes at school.